Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to explore TensorFlow Playground that you can um, basically use it to build a mini artificial neural network without any code at all. And it's actually very, very interesting and very exciting because we can add, build our own network. We can use it for to perform classification, perform regression, and so on. So if you guys wanted to check it out, please go to playground.tensorflow.org. Okay, so I have it open right here. So as you guys can see here, what you guys can see is that here we have our, what we call it, features or our inputs. Okay, so let's assume that we have two inputs, x1 and x2. Here we have our output, okay? And here we can build any network we want. Again, please bear in mind that in this project, we are going to build a very simple single neuron model, which is the simplest form, okay? So as you guys can see here, what we could do is that we can add, let's say, hidden layers. So I can add, for example, an additional hidden layer in here. And I can change as well the number of neurons in this hidden layer. And a very important um, uh, note to, um, to discuss here is that every input is connected to all the neurons in the hidden layer or in the following layer. So X1 here, as you guys can see, is connected to this neuron. And this input as well is connected to this neuron as well. And this input is connected to this neuron too, as you guys can see here. So every single input is fully connected to all the neurons in the next layer. And here as well for X2, they are fully connected to the first hidden neuron, here as well, and so on. And that's where you build what we call it dense network, or fully connected artificial neural network, in which all the inputs are fully connected to all the hidden neurons, and all the hidden neurons are fully connected to the output. So as you guys can see here, there is all of them are fully connected. And these are all the values of the weights. As I mentioned earlier, that we're going to have various weights that, that will basically change throughout the entire training process. All right. So again, we're going to cover uh, how to build a fully connected artificial neural networks in the next section, okay? Here, we're just gonna kind of, you know, like, um, again, as, as a little kid, you know, trying to learn everything from just, you know, like by example or by experience, we're gonna become masters when, when it comes to um, building and training fully connected artificial neural networks. So let's take a look at a, at a very simple example. Let's assume that here we have, these are the different inputs that we can choose, okay? So as you guys can see here, this input is actually very simple. They are already separable, which means I can separate the two classes, as you guys can see here. Here, it's a little bit harder, a little bit, okay? Because now I have two classes, but they are uh, not separated by straight line. So I need to kind of, you know, like step up my game a little bit and kind of draw a circle in here okay, to separate the two classes. Here, it become a little bit more difficult to actually draw a boundary between the two classes. And that's kind of the most difficult of all, to draw a boundary between all this that's a lot more complex. And what we're doing here is that we're performing classification. It's like, you know, like um, I have, for example, images, and these images are, let's say, of cats or dogs, okay? So that's one example of uh, training artificial neural networks is to perform classification task. I need to say, okay, when you see this image, that's an image of a cat. When you see that image, that's an image of a dog, okay? So that's what we call the problem type, as you guys can see here. Mainly there are two types. There are classification and there are regression, okay? So in classification, we wanna classify two classes or more than two classes. But for regression, we try to predict a continuous output. For example, uh, I wanted to predict, let's say, the stock price tomorrow. The output here uh, is continuous output. I wanted to predict something that's continuously changing. Okay, it's not, it's not categorical, it's not classes, it's not classification. Uh, actually, again, it's in, in our um, project, which is the first project, we are going to predict the temperature in Fahrenheit given the temperature in Celsius. So that's simply a regression problem in a nutshell. All right, so as you guys can see here, here we're gonna learn a lot of stuff. 
uh, and then please bear in mind that this is just you know kind of the beginning. We're gonna dig a little, lot, lot more deeper into what do these mean, do, what do these parameters mean moving forward. This is what we call it a learning rate. So here you can actually change the learning rate, which is how fast the network will learn. Okay, how aggressive you want it to change your parameters. Here is what we call it an activation function. Okay, we're gonna discuss activation functions in a lot more details. So there is what we call a ReLU or rectified linear units. There is sigmoid, there is linear, and that's the activation function that we can use at the outputs of these neurons. Please bear in mind that in this project, we are going to even ignore activation functions. We're gonna say, okay, you know what? I don't even have an activation function. I only have an input that's multiplied by the weight. I'm gonna sum it up to the bias and whatever output we're just gonna you know we're gonna generate it and as is we're not gonna perform any activation functions okay again moving forward we're gonna try to learn what do these, uh, these activation functions mean and so on and then we're gonna have what we call regularization which is what we call l1 and l2 regularization and the overall idea is that we wanted to um, make our network more general we wanted to train a network that if we deploy it in practice, it can perform well as well, okay? One of the challenges of artificial neural networks is that we wanted to avoid what we call it overfitting, which means that let's say um, we wanted to train a network to classify, let's say, images of cats and dogs. We take the network, we feed it in a ton of images of cats and dogs, and then they could classify them, let's say, with 95% accuracy, okay? So we, what we could we say, we say, you know what, now I in like, you know, claimed victory, now I'm happy, now I can take this network and deploy it in practice, all right? And when you deploy it in practice, you will find that this network performance is horrible, okay? It's like generating, let's say, 60%. And then you will wonder, okay, what happened? So what happened is, the network has been able to overfit the training data, just trying to learn all the details of this training data only, and when you try to test it, you know, on, an, on images that the network has never seen before will fail miserably. And that's what we hate in training these artificial neural networks. We want to train a network that could work well during training, work well during testing. Okay, and, and that's where the regularization comes into play. We're going to discuss that again in a lot more details moving forward. Here we can change the rate of regularization. Okay. And then, again, as I mentioned, the problem type, we can select classification or regression. And as you guys can see here, here we have the number of epochs, which is every time we use all the training data to update the weights, we call that one epoch. And again, as I mentioned, artificial neural networks learn by example. It's like humans. It doesn't happen, you know, like overnight. It doesn't happen like suddenly. It happens over and over again. You take in the input-output data, you show it to the network, you update the weights, and then the error goes down a little bit, and then you keep repeating and repeating, and it happens over and over again. And that's where what we call it epochs, okay? All right, so I've been talking, you know, rambling for, for a while. Let's get started and let's see how can we train our network to perform a simple classification task. So simply here, I'm gonna say, okay, let's select, for example, like a sigmoid activation function. Let's pick like a learning rate, let's say 0.01. Let's say, keep it as classification and let's run play. And as you guys can see here, that's the loss. That's my error. As you guys can see, it's going down, 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 which means over and over again, as you guys can see here, all the values of weights are being changed, which means these are the values of weights that I have been able to train to change so I can minimize the loss. And as you guys can see here, the total loss becomes 0 0.001. So the error is almost zero, okay, which is perfect. Now the error goes down, and now I've been able to create that boundary, okay, which is simply an equation of a simple straight line. Okay, y equal, equals to mx plus b. That's all what it is. And that straight line is able to separate these two classes. Now I'm able to separate them. So when I separate them, that's all what it is. If I come up with the equation of this straight line, then I can say, you know what, anything on that right hand side of that straight line is blue, anything on the left hand side is orange. That's all what it is, okay? 
All right, which is pretty incredible, as you guys can see here. So now I can go ahead, stop the training, okay? And what I could do is that I could take this artificial neural network now with all these values of weights, and here you go. Now you have a mini brain, which is, again, pretty fascinating. You literally trained a mini brain that can classify any of these two classes. Uh, obviously, it's, you know, like you can use it to do a lot more advanced elements. You can use it in autonomous driving. You can use it for um, like face recognition, image classification. It's just incredible. Like I'm super passionate about artificial intelligence and I, 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 I honestly can't even sleep at night. It's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. Like really incredible. You're building a mini brain, mini human being in just in a, in a very like... Um, uh, in a very just you know in a very easy way you know, I'm gonna learn that we can just build kind of a specialist obviously the general intelligence for humans we didn't achieve that yet okay but again um, you can um, uh, build just kind of a special network that can do specific tasks and it can even do it better than humans which is again pretty uh, pretty scary to be honest all right so let's go ahead and maybe step up our game a little bit let's try for example these um, this input, let's run it again. As you guys can see here, now the network is trying to train, it's trying to come up with that line. As you guys can see here, the loss is 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.38. It's trying, trying, you know, trying really hard. It's going better and better, okay? And here you go. Now it's a lot, a lot better. It's 0.1, so the error is actually going down. The network is learning, and the network has been able to come up with this boundary, which is a circle, that could classify the uh, the input uh, the input data which is pretty pretty fascinating let's maybe try this one let's run it again and that's a very very hard problem to solve and that might take a little while to actually train because again this is a very very complex uh, complex problem okay so let's leave it let's leave it running as you guys can see the loss is not changing anymore Okay, and you know, even if you leave it for, let's say 2000 epochs, you know, it will not gonna get any better. Okay, why that means now we are asking, let's say a little kid, for example, you know, with a kid's brain to let's say, um, like do a PhD, something like that, which is very, very challenging. It's just out of their capability, okay? So what we need to do here, that we need to increase the complexity of that brain. Let's add additional neurons, my apologies let's here add additional neurons first let's add another hidden layer add a couple of neurons too okay so make it a little bit more complex as you guys can see here okay which is again pretty pretty fascinating and maybe add additional hidden layer add a couple of neurons too and maybe go go here change our activation function make it let's say relu activation function and let's run it and you will find that you know hopefully we will get something out of it and as you guys can see here, I'm still stuck at 0.486. It's trying, it's trying. All the values of weights are being changing. Again, it's an optimization problem, trying to find the best values of weights that could minimize the output error. Again, it's getting better, it's getting better over and over again. Please bear in mind that this is a very challenging um, classification task. Okay. So again, at least we went it's getting a little bit better compared to the previous um, problem, okay? Or pre previous network, which is a simple network, and here we go. Now we're getting better, 0 0.3, 0 0.30, 0 0.2, okay? It, it, it's just fascinating. As you guys can see here, you are, again, teaching a mini brain to do this classification task, and you're trying to change all the values of the weights in here, okay? Over and over again and the loss is going down, 0 0.15, 0 0.0, okay, here we go. So this is all the blue, as you guys can see here, and that's all the orange. Again, pretty fascinating. We reach again an error of around, a loss of around 0 0.06 or 0 0.05, which is again, pretty incredible. All right, okay, and that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, in the next lecture, what we're gonna do is that we're going to build our first single neuron model in TensorFlow 2.0. And, um, and that's all what I have. Please enjoy TensorFlow 2.0 and happy learning.